Everyone knows the mega billionaires behind the top corporations of the world. Apple is Steve Jobs, Microsoft is Bill Gates, Amazon is the evil bald dude, Facebook is Mark Zuckerberg, and Tesla is Elon Musk. Contrastingly, only a small fraction of people know the leaders behind Alphabet or Google, Sergey Brin and Larry Page. But why? Today, Google no doubt has the biggest influence on each of our daily lives. Aside from e-commerce, they basically own the entire internet, from mail and cloud storage to YouTube and Google.com, not to mention Android, Waymo, and Google Fiber. Despite their vast impact, Larry Page and Sergey Brin don't have a large fan base like Steve Jobs or Apple, nor are they widely credited for revolutionizing the internet. At the same time though, they also don't have large hate trains like Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg. Though many people may dislike Google, the feeling doesn't carry on to its founders, as most people don't even know who they are. This leaves Larry Page and Sergey Brin in a position where they're not hated or liked, they're just there. They're your everyday mega billionaires who founded a trillion dollar giant. So how did the genius founders of one of the most influential companies end up in such an underrated position? Well, starting off, neither Larry Page nor Sergey Brin have been the CEO of Google for very long. When they started the company in 1998, Larry Page was originally the CEO of the company. But from the start, both Larry Page and Sergey Brin knew that they weren't the charismatic public CEO type. They were more of the innovative tech people, rather than businessmen similar to Elon Musk. I hate to say it, but if you've ever heard Larry Page talk, you'd know that he's not very exciting to listen to for the average person. He's full of great knowledge and new ideas. However, listening to him often just feels like listening to a lecture. And I'm sure they know this as well, as they decided to act accordingly. Instead of just pushing through with ums here and there like Elon Musk, in 2001, the duo decided to hire a businessman CEO named Eric Schmidt. As a result, Eric Schmidt would lead Google through all of the public relations events during the early days of Google, from quarterly reports to acquisitions. Though Larry Page and Sergey Brin would play integral roles behind the scenes, Eric's name was the one that would make it onto the newspaper and to the public's ear most often. This situation would continue for a full decade up until January of 2011. At this point, Eric Schmidt would step aside to an advisory role as executive chairman, and Larry Page would take the reins of the company. However, two major issues would riddle Page's leadership and it wasn't that he was a bad CEO per se. Rather, Page suffered from a health condition. Unfortunately, in 2012, Page would be struck by vocal cord paralysis, making it very difficult for him to talk, especially to large crowds. Consequently, he would begin skipping a slew of earnings calls and basically eliminated all public speaking events, understandably so. At the same time, many of Google shareholders would start feeling that Larry Page was often distracted by various passion projects such as Google Glass and the infamous Google Island. Google Island was especially concerning for investors. In 2013, Larry Page detailed how he would like Google to be run kind of like an island, independent of regulation, corporate interests, and of course, shareholders. He believed that this would be the best for pushing forward innovation and technological improvements. But though this may be admirable from an outside perspective, this is extremely concerning for shareholders. At the same time, Sergey Brin would find himself within a scandal. In 2014, it came out that Sergey Brin was having an affair with marketing manager Amanda Rosenberg. Fortunately, there were no accusations of misconduct or anything of that sort. But this doesn't look too good when you're already married to someone else, and that someone else is the founder of 23andMe. As you would guess, this is when Sergey Brin's image as a Tony Stark similar to Elon Musk today basically evaporated away. But since Sergey Brin was literally the co-founder and still retained large stakes within the company, he couldn't be kicked out. In the meantime, Larry Page, who likely didn't want to take down his business partner and friend, acted like the situation never happened and would never publicly address it. Following this event in August of 2015, both Larry Page and Sergey Brin would basically just fall off the face of the planet. 
Larry Page would announce that both of them would step away from day-to-day -day operations of Google and that they would become the CEO and president of a holding company named Alphabet. Alongside this, Sundar Pichai would assume the role of Google CEO. After this, Larry Page and Sergey Brin were still quite involved with the running of Google, as Sundar Pichai was required to report directly to Page, and both of them held on to their voting shares. However, this transition effectively cut off all public relations that either of them had to participate in. This system would only last four years until Larry Page and Sergey Brin would completely step away in December of 2019, making Sundar Pichai the CEO of Alphabet. As you can see, neither Larry Page nor Sergey Brin served as the public CEO for most of the company's life. In the early days, it was Eric Schmidt. The two would start to play a more public role in the early 2010s, but Larry's health issues and Sergey's affair would quickly put a halt to this endeavor. As a result, the two never had much publicity. They didn't have iconic product reveals like Steve Jobs or Elon Musk, nor did they participate in infamous court hearings. But even more importantly, I don't think the two of them cared to run a business. They weren't exactly interested in building up an international conglomerate and becoming full-time leaders slash managers. Rather, they wanted to continue inventing and innovating. In fact, that's precisely what Larry Page tried to do during his time as CEO. Between 2011 and 2015, Larry Page would get Google much more heavily involved with self-driving technology, wearable technology, smartphone lines, and fiber internet. And as for Sergey Brin, we all know his dabble with Google Glass. During their leadership, it was said that Google was run more like a research institution as opposed to a multi-hundred billion dollar company. Moreover, after stepping down as Google CEO, Larry Page would get more involved with some rather interesting projects. In 2016, Larry Page began to concentrate on flying cars. And he's not behind just one flying car, but three of them, which are the Cora, the flyer and opener. Evidently, it seems like the two really just wanted to invent new things, and running an internet company just wasn't that interesting to them. Maybe they would have not just stuck around, but have been leading voices in the company if it were solely focused on flying cars and rockets. And in such a scenario, they may have grown a fan base similar to that of Elon Musk. But as this was not the case, the two weren't at the forefront of Google's public relations. Moving on, the other major reason that the founders of Google are relatively unknown is that the average person doesn't really care about Google. It's no doubt a great service that's extremely helpful, but it doesn't really get the average person excited. The iPhone gets people excited, and landing rockets gets people excited, but Google, not so much. I mean, a search engine and browser are great, but it's not necessarily fun and cool. This is the same case with Microsoft, Facebook, and Amazon as well. Most people don't find them exactly exciting. Don't get me wrong here, these companies play an integral role in many of our lives, from our operating system and our social lives to one day prime delivery. With that being said though, none of these companies are particularly exciting. But one major difference between these companies and Google is that their founders are quite well known. So, what could explain this? Well, the answer is that all these guys are known for their wealth. Bill Gates dominated the billionaires list literally from the 1980s till two years ago, and he's still number three. As for Mark Zuckerberg, he was the next Harvard drop-up billionaire who reached billionaire status at a record low age of 23 years old at the time. And as for Jeff Bezos, really, the only reason people even know him today is because he's the richest person in the world, while Amazon is notorious for undercutting taxes and paying employees low wages. Contrastingly, though Larry Page and Sergey Brin are extremely rich, they were never the richest in the world, nor were they the youngest on the list. So, they weren't known for their wealth, either. At the end of the day, most mega billionaires are known for three major reasons, which are being charismatic leaders, exciting contributions to society, and or extreme amounts of wealth to the extent where they're the richest on the list or the youngest on the list. And any billionaire that doesn't conform to these aspects is often vastly unknown. Such is the case with Bernard Arnold and Larry Ellison. But of course, the two most notable ones are the computer geniuses from Google, 
Larry Page, and Sergey Brin. Do you guys look up to either of these pioneers? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys think these two deserve some more love. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.